Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, a surprising twist in our family tree saw Comet, our god of sacrifice reborn. He does look rather different from the original Comet, the one from the Fernleaf Islands. After all, he has a very, very fiery appearance, and despite his connection with that stinky tail, he doesn't exactly look like he's meant to blend in with the jungle scenery. He does blend in pretty well with the savannas, though, so I think despite it all, he is going to grow up to be one very, very strong baby. He's going to have to, too, because both of his parents are just about to pass away. Chess only has three days remaining, Evie only has two. So pretty soon, he's going to have to rely on his big brother to keep him safe, and I'm pretty sure that Cherubo is still just going to be a teenager when that happens. So they might actually have to look for their big sister. Though, as it is right now, Coca-Cola has her own troubles. She has spent days and days yelling at Romeo sitting right in the middle of the oasis. He swam his way over here and scared her half to death. And now that has caused her to go into labor, I guess. She had to build her nest right here because she couldn't make it back to the permanent one. So pretty soon, we're going to see the birth of our very first Baryena prince. And I'm super excited to see what they're going to look like. I guess there is always the possibility that we could see a special trait on their baby. A special snout, anyways. Since Coca-Cola has the normal snout, we know that there's definitely not a derp snout hiding away in her genetics. So maybe if she passes whatever's in her second slot over the short snout, this baby will be completely special. And of course, we're hoping the same can be said about Lumina's baby too. She still has three more days to go though. So let's just have her go ahead and pick up the grasses for now. She's going to have to make sure this whole area is clear for her mate anyways. Likewise, I think the only other turns we have left are Kaya and Smoke. So since Kaya is watching after the baby right now, and since we don't really have any more roots to gather up, Let's just have her go ahead and clear out the grasses too. Maybe she can show Smoke how it's done. He seems like he's going to be a bit more of a homebody anyways. Always playing around in the nests over here. So I think he would be a very, very good member of path clearing duty. Especially since the savannah grass grows back so quickly here. That should be the very last of our turns though. Aside from Comet, who I think I'm going to have settle down right between his parents after all. So we'll just go back to Coca-Cola here and we'll see what her very first baby is going to look like. Our very first Baryena hybrid of the tribe. Oh good, it looks like she had a daughter. And it looks like she also has the nimble fingers right alongside that Baryena claw. Little Sheba, that is a very cute name for a Baryena hybrid. And honestly, she looks like the spitting image of her father. The only thing she's missing is the Baryena snout. And unfortunately, it looks like we have the short snout after all. Still very, very cute though, and a very helpful member of the tribe. I have noticed that we're getting pretty low on females, so it's a good thing that she was born. Kai is getting pretty close to the end of her lifespan after all. This is going to be her very last baby. Lumina already has a mate, and of course, Evie is going to pass away too. So pretty soon, it's just going to be Coca-Cola, her baby, and Lumina, and whatever she brings into the world. But I'm sure Coca-Cola is just over the moon. In fact, she would probably rush out into the grasses to see if she can find her Baryena love. Of course, we know that he's already passed away, but she doesn't know that yet. So she would probably put her baby's safety in Clyde's hands. I kind of feel like Clyde is a bit of a knight in this situation. Oh, and really? There was a permanent nest right back here all along Coca-Cola. Oh my gosh, you could have used that instead. I wonder if maybe your Baryena love was trying to lead you toward this? It doesn't look like he's out here. I know we're going to find his remains out here somewhere though, so that's what she's searching for. But yeah, I kind of feel like Clyde is kind of her knight in shining armor in a way. Not in a romantic way though. I don't think he really sees her that way. But Coca-Cola was one of the only creatures who ever truly accepted him for who he is, despite his rough upbringing and all. So it's a connection that's built more on their trust for each other. And she's definitely going to need somebody like that by her side. Especially if they're going to try to lead her baby all the way back to her family. Now, I think it's about time that Romeo started making his way back toward the mainland too. He's probably getting pretty tired over here anyways with that hot savannah sun beating down on his back. So since he's pretty much found everything that he can out here, everything that he can safely reach, 
we'll have him head back to Coca-Cola to let her know about the new base that he found. It's not as though it's a particularly easy place for any creature to settle down, but I'm still hoping that sometime in the future, I mean, he has a pretty good amount of his lifespan on him anyways. Sometime in the future, maybe he can return there and have a few babies of his own. But for now, it's just that long, long swim back to the mainland. So Cherubo, tonight is going to be your very last night with your mother. I know you're very, very concerned with making sure you can catch this mall. He was actually trying to clear out the grasses around here. He figured if he could make an open space to run, it would be easy to sneak up on the mole next time. Next time when he has a little bit more energy to spare. But I feel like he would rather spend this time with his mother. She was a very important part of his life after all, always giving him the courage and the confidence that he needed to go on. That's why he's not the type to give up. Even though he did mess up on his very first mole hunt, he's not going to let that stop him, and he has his mother to thank for that. So we'll make sure that Chess stays by her side too, gathering up those last few coconuts, picking up the grasses, and I think that Comet is going to stay in the nest for one more night. It's not as though he can really move anywhere else anyways. Interesting how they're keeping the God of Sacrifice so stifled. It's almost as if they know that he could get into some serious trouble here. Now, Baron, I think we are going to have you see if you could collect that crab in the water, because you are the only creature close enough with three turns. So, this is kind of a leap of faith. We'll bring you down here to grab the crab quickly. And I guess spend a little bit of time just making sure that nothing else is in the ocean over here. Since he is a little bit better at seeing than most of our other creatures, he can really tell if the leeches are coming. That works well with his prophet's story, too. And it makes me wonder if he's a little bit worried that nobody else in the tribe has shown the same potential. In particular, his children don't seem to be too connected to the prophet's ways. Smoke doesn't have those beautiful gazelle horns that mark him as a prophet. So I wonder if Baron's afraid that nobody's going to be able to protect the tribe. I mean, especially once he passes. Though he still has about half of his lifespan to go. Once he does pass, who's going to keep watch over the deities and all of their omens? Who's going to make sure that the tribe knows when danger is approaching? I guess we'll just have to hope that Kaya's next baby will have the horns too. So let's bring you back to the nest this time so you can clear out the grasses over on this side. It would probably be a good idea for us to clear out everything around this tree. We still have two more days to go for you, Lumina. So one more berry for you, and then let's have you settle down right underneath the branches. You can claim this area for your own nest. I would have Bandersnatch see if he could maybe knock down some more coconuts for you, but I think that would just be setting himself up for some pretty bad situations the next morning. I guess that's actually going to have to be Baron's job instead. Or Kaya if she has a little bit more energy to spare. So that should be the last of our turns. Let's go back to Coca-Cola, because I want to make sure that we can find her mate's remains. And I also want to make sure that nothing dangerous is going to spawn here in the meantime. You know, we haven't seen a single bluebird here. Not a single bluebird on this island, so it makes me think that maybe they can't fly over the oasis. For whatever reason, it seems to be protected from their presence. Though that's not a bad thing, that means the babies can be a little bit more adventurous too. I don't want to jinx it, but we haven't seen any rogue males either. And that's a little bit more surprising to me. The rogue males seem to spawn very, very frequently in the savannah tiles, so I figured it would be impossible to get rid of them. But it truly seems like our tribe is all alone on this island. And now, unfortunately, we are one alpha short. Evie has finally passed on. So Chess, not being able to bear the thought of being without his mate, is going to pass right behind her. He only has one day remaining too. So you can use this time to go ahead and crack open one more of these coconuts. Two more pieces of food for both of your babies. Now Cherubo, since it really doesn't seem like you're going to have your third gem in time, let's see if we can move you underneath the tree. Comet can sit with the remains of his mother for now. And I guess we could have Chess go ahead and pick up that extra nest so it doesn't end up going to waste. We'll bring you right underneath the shade, so hopefully you can regain your energy, and you'll have the strength that you need to protect your little brother at all times. That would probably be Evie's last parting wish. With her final breath, she would whisper to Cherubo to keep little Comet safe, to make sure he doesn't get himself into too much trouble. 
She knows how rambunctious her kids can be, after all. Coca-Cola herself has been missing for quite some time. So let's go back to our smelling vision, and let's see if we can track down that Birgina of yours. Let's have you go this way, actually. I feel like you would have a little bit more luck if you went down toward the shores, and if you veered off toward the left, of course. Part of me wondered if maybe he was returning to our old base, actually. This was where we set up our nest before, and it seemed like a pretty good location for him to lead her to have her baby. So we'll see what we can find over this way. Now, can Romeo get back to the mainland yet? Yeah, it looks like he can just barely claw his way back up to the shores. So you're going to get the chance to meet Coca-Cola's very own baby. That's probably going to be a little bit awkward. Not to mention the fact that Clyde is right here taking care of her. I wonder if he actually thinks that this is Clyde's baby. They don't exactly share too many similarities, though. She looks very, very different from him. And aside from that, he looks just like Romeo's mother. I mean, granted, Romeo didn't really know his mother very well at all. Kaya ended up disappearing far, far before he had even grown his third gem. So maybe he would just remember her in tiny flashes? Little flashes of white fur and that looming scorpion tail. So what would he think when he sees Clyde? What do you guys think? Like, would he assume that this is his brother? He has to figure there is some sort of connection there, even if Clyde doesn't know it himself. It almost makes it even more ironic that Romeo looks nothing like his mother. I mean, they share that derp snout, but otherwise... That peacock tail kind of overrides most of their similarities. If you sat these two side by side, you would never really know that they were related at all. I wonder if he would scoot the baby a little bit further away though. Like if he is truly feeling that awkward around this guy, maybe he would try to put some distance between him and Shiba. Oh? Oh, that is very, very ominous. Oh my gosh. So we did have a wanderer here? Oh my gosh, I wonder if that might be the remains of Clyde's parents. Oh, Clyde, we have to bring you over here to inspect this. With the clown quite watching too. Oh, that is so eerie. I think that might actually be his parents' skeleton. I mean, we didn't see it before. I wonder if maybe his parents were still alive after all. Oh, how heartbreaking would that be? If they were trying to catch up to him and they just didn't make it in time, they were just one day too late. It is just heartbreak after heartbreak on this side of the island. Hopefully we're going to be a little bit luckier on this side then, because we have to make sure that Lumina builds her nest. She can definitely give birth on this night, so go ahead and build your very own nest right underneath the shade of the tree. We should probably make sure that Bandersnatch is sitting next to you too. In fact, since the coconuts are over here now, he can even supply you with a little bit of lunch. And maybe it's about time that we have Baron return to his BB tomb. That would give Kaya a little bit of time to explore. Since she only has four days remaining on her lifespan now, she's probably getting a little bit antsy, actually. Even though she has taken down so many Baryinas in her time, she is still not satisfied. But to be honest, I never felt like Kaya ever would be. It's the kind of revenge that just keeps eating away at a creature. Though if she catches a whiff of these deadly island ports, I wonder if she would start to veer off in this direction. Like, Baron, you should probably keep a very, very close eye on her. For now, we'll have you come back here to your baby just to make sure the smoke is okay. In fact, you two can even do a little bit of water gazing to see if you can find some clown koi. This is probably like his last ditch effort to see if he has any connection to the deities. To see if any little fish are going to swim to the surface to greet their newest prophet. But unfortunately, the oasis is very, very quiet today. So I think all that's left to do is go back to Lumina to see if hopefully her baby is going to survive. And of course, to see if we're going to get a glimpse of that sticky tongue again. Oh no. Oh. oh, that is always so heartbreaking. Only the derps now, and unfortunately, they do definitely share an immunity gene. So Mist wasn't able to keep their babies safe. That is such a blow to the heart, but I don't feel like we can give up. This is still our best chance of seeing the sticky tongue again, so Lumina, surely you would be willing to try again with Bandersnatch. It's all that we can do to keep going. 
and it's all that we can do to keep the hope of those gold-hearted bananas strong. I think that Mist would probably appreciate that anyways. She is our deity of optimism, so keeping that hope alive in her heart will surely summon that protection. Oh, and look at this. Not all hope is lost because it looks like Smoke actually has his second gem now. So let's go ahead and change that over to the silver color. So that means you can stray a little bit further away from your father. And that means that Baron can keep a closer eye on his mate too. Because he has noticed that she seems to be slinking off into the grasses. Let's have him come all the way over here to confront her and to make sure that her pathway's clear. If she has it set in her mind that she's going to cross a stream here, he wants to make sure that she's going to be safe. Now that waterfall looks a little bit dangerous, so we'll probably want to have you come down toward the shore. Let's move you over here, and we'll have Baron... Oh, where should Baron set up? Maybe we'll have him wait until we're almost done with our turns, because I'm a little bit leery to have him jump down onto the shore on this one. Instead, we'll go back to the kids beneath the prophet's tree, because now they're truly all alone. Both of their parents have passed away, but thank goodness Cherubo has a little bit of extra energy thanks to the shade. Let's have him sniff around first, just to make sure that nothing is lurking out here. No moles, no danger and no more skeletons aside from the two from your parents. So we'll give these two a little bit of time to mourn. We'll have Cherubo go ahead and collect the coconuts just like his father used to do, so at least we know that these two kids will definitely be able to eat. And then we can go back to Coca-Cola to see if she'll have a little bit more luck finding her Baryina love on this turn. To be honest, I'm a little bit concerned that his remains may have disappeared already. The more time we spend searching, the more likely they are to decay. So one last time, Coca-Cola. Let's go ahead and sniff around. Yeah, still no sign of your Baryina love? Well, even without finding his remains, I feel like you would probably understand what happened now. Your connection with him has faded, and it seems like he's never going to get the chance to meet his very own daughter. So we'll have her return back to the main group on the next turn. She can break the news to Shiva, and they can all figure out what their next plan of action is going to be. And so meanwhile, Romeo is just so, so oblivious. I could actually see him packing away this nest as if he's so sure that he's going to lead everybody across the oasis pretty soon. Like, he already knows where the perfect setup is right across the water. All he needs to do is find the princess. That's probably all well and good, too. It's not as though Clyde is going to have too much energy to search for her right now. He's mourning too, after all. Gosh, though, today has just been a day of death. I mean, we still have 11 creatures in our tribe, so we don't have to worry about going extinct anytime soon. But the amount of skeletons we have on this island is kind of scary. Smoke might not be able to sense that danger, but his father definitely can. So let's have him jump down to the beaches. We'll have him come over here. Scout around for any leeches, and once he doesn't see one in the waves, he can call his mate over here too. And now Kaya is so close to those ports that she must know without a doubt, she is definitely smelling baryinas. In fact, she's not just smelling the normal baryinas that they're used to, she's probably smelling the killer baryinas too. I would be willing to bet that the killer baryinas are why there are so many skeletons littered on these ports. There's actually only four tiles for us to work with. Oh, interesting. I thought we usually had five tiles? Well, maybe it's different because we're in the oasis. Maybe that water is cutting into one of the tiles that we would usually have. But I guess that means if we do decide to go to the Killer Islands next, and I feel like that would probably be the most natural to our story. We would have to make sure that we choose the four strongest creatures to go with us. You know, maybe Sheba's birth was an even bigger blessing than we realized. If we find another friendly Baryina roaming out in the darkness somewhere, she would be our best bet at seeing the Baryina now on our babies. And I think that would be a pretty good indication that we were ready to take on these killer parts. So maybe we'll have to try to make that a goal too. It all depends if another Baryina decides to spawn out here. So let's just make sure that nobody's creeping around in the grasses. No extra hidden family members from Clyde. No, it looks like everybody must truly be gone. So let's have Coca-Cola stumble out from the darkness, right next to her baby as she gently passes her some berries. Sheba never knew her father, so it might not be so heartbreaking to her. 
In fact, she might not even understand any of this at all. But the disappearance of her bear Yina love has definitely affected Coca-Cola. And I think that's something that even Romeo would notice. Maybe it's about time that he finally acted in a way that wasn't purely selfish. Like, no selfish reasons lingering behind any of his actions anymore. He just wants to see the princess happy again. He's known her ever since he was a little baby, so he's always known her to be very independent and very, very fiery. But this has caused her to lose a little bit of her spark. So maybe in the next episode, we'll see if he can help her find it again. And of course, we'll see if Clyde can discover anything else about his strange past, too. It really seems to me that his parents were trying desperately to find him again. And I wonder if maybe these clown coy? Maybe that's the spirit of his family even tracking him down now, because it seems awfully strange that they're suddenly so interested in him. And in the next episode, of course, we'll have to see if we can bring the kids to their family too. Poor Comet, only six days old. Poor Cherubos, still without his second gem. And now that he's not beneath the safety of the trees, he only has one turn to work with. But that turn is still going to go straight to his brother, straight to making sure that he has enough food in his belly. And this is part of the reason why I feel like Comet is probably going to grow up to be just like our god of sacrifice. He is not going to flinch at the sight of danger, but jump in head first to keep his family safe. It's what his big brother would have done after all. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!